There's a version of you that got lost. The kid who loved digging for worms, or memorizing facts about space, or who could spend hours just drawing. The kid who was bright, the one who asked why. But when a child's world becomes scary, the brain doesn't care about potential anymore. It cares about protection. That switch from learning to surviving isn't just a memory. It's not a story you tell. It's a set of real, physical changes. Your brain adapted to get you through. Today, we're talking about the five ways your brain changed to protect you, and why, as an adult, you might still be paying the price. This isn't about blame. This is about understanding. Number one, your brain's alarm system got stuck on. Inside your brain, there's a small, almond-shaped structure called the amygdala. Think of it as your body's smoke detector. Its job is to scan for danger, and when it finds it, sound the alarm. For a child in a safe home, this alarm goes off when it's supposed to. A car horn blares. The alarm sounds, you jump, and it's over. But when a child's environment is consistently threatening, scary, or unpredictable, that smoke detector gets turned on and never turns off. It becomes hypersensitive. The brain learns that the world is danger. As an adult, this is what we call hypervigilance. It's the inability to sit with your back to a door. It's jumping out of your skin when your partner walks into the room. It's analyzing every boss's email for a hidden, angry tone. It's the constant, humming feeling in your chest that something is about to go wrong. You are always waiting for the other shoe to drop. You're not paranoid or oversensitive. Your amygdala is overactive. And what about that bright kid? A brain that is constantly using its energy to scan for threats has no energy left for curiosity. You can't be in a state of wonder when you're in a state of fear. You can't focus on learning a new skill when your brain is busy checking every exit, both physical and emotional. That bright, focused kid didn't disappear. Their brain just got a new, full-time job. Security guard. Number two, your brake pedal was slowed down. If the amygdala is the gas pedal, the panic button, your brain also has a brake. This is the prefrontal cortex, or PFC. It's the part right behind your forehead. The PFC is the adult in the room. It's in charge of logical thinking, planning, impulse control, and emotional regulation. Its job is to look at the amygdala's alarm and say, hold on. Is this really a threat? Or is it just a car backfiring? It calms you down. Here's the problem. The PFC is one of the last parts of the brain to develop fully. It's still being built throughout your childhood and teens. When the brain is flooded with stress hormones from trauma, the development of that PFC is slowed down. The connections between the calm PFC and the panic amygdala don't form as strongly. As an adult, this feels like having an all gas no brake system. It's that flash of rage that comes out of nowhere over a small problem. It's the overwhelming wave of sadness that floods you. It's the impulse to spend money, eat, or say something you know you'll regret, but you feel powerless to stop. You know you're overreacting, but you can't seem to access the logical part of your mind in time. That bright kid was smart. You are smart. But your brain's hardware for calm and logical response was being built during an earthquake the construction crew got disrupted. This isn't a failure of your character. It's a difference in your wiring. Number three, your memory manager started scrambling files. Let's talk about the hippocampus. This brain structure is your memory manager. Its job is to take your daily experiences and file them away neatly. It puts a timestamp on them. This happened on Tuesday. It was in the past. It's over now. It creates a story, a timeline, but the hippocampus is extremely sensitive to stress hormones. During an overwhelming or traumatic event, the hippocampus can go offline to protect you. It just stops filing. The result is that the traumatic memory doesn't get filed away as past. It stays in your nervous system as present. This is why, as an adult, you experience flashbacks. A certain smell, a time of day, or a tone of voice can pull that memory out. And your body reacts as if the terrible thing is happening right now. Your heart pounds, you sweat, you're back there. It also leads to fragmented memories. You might have huge blank spots from your childhood, or you might remember the feeling of dread or the color of the wallpaper, but not what happened before or after the files are scrambled. How does this affect the bright kid? The hippocampus is also one of the most important parts of the brain for learning and forming new memories. This is why you might feel stupid now. You have to read the same page in a book five times. You walk into a room and forget why. You struggle to learn a new process at work. Even though you know you're smart enough, you're not losing your mind. 
Your memory manager is overworked, damaged, and busy trying to handle a backlog of old, scary files. It has less bandwidth to save the new ones. Number four, your sense of self learn to disconnect. When physical escape is not an option, the mind finds another way out. It's a defense mechanism called dissociation. Your brain has a network for your sense of self. This includes the insula, which helps you feel your internal body states, like your heartbeat or a growling stomach, and the default mode network, which is active when you think about me, your past, and your future. To survive unbearable feelings, whether it's fear, pain, or loneliness, the brain can learn to disconnect from these areas. It numbs the me center. As a child, this was a superpower. It allowed you to float away, to zone out, to feel like you were watching a movie of your life instead of being in it. It protected you. But as an adult, this survival skill becomes a trap. It feels like being numb. It's that, I don't feel sad, but I don't feel happy either. I feel nothing state. It's looking in the mirror and not feeling connected to the person you see. It's going through the motions of your life, work, relationships, hobbies, but feeling like an imposter, like you're just outside looking in. It's also why you might not know what you want. When people ask, what are your passions? Or what do you want for dinner? You genuinely don't know. To know what you want, you have to be connected to yourself. And your brain learned the connection was unsafe. That bright kid was present. They were in their body, excited and engaged. Survival taught you to check out. And now, as an adult, it's hard to check back in. Number five, your reward system was recalibrated for chaos. We are all driven by a reward system, managed largely by the chemical dopamine. You get a little hit of it when you eat good food, laugh with a friend, or finish a project. It's what motivates you. But growing up in a high-stress, traumatic environment floods your system with a different set of chemicals adrenaline and cortisol. Your baseline for normal is set to emergency. As an adult, this messes up your reward system in two major ways. First, your brain can become less sensitive to normal pleasures. A calm, peaceful day doesn't give you a dopamine hit. It feels boring, empty, even a little bit scary. So you seek out chaos. You might be drawn to high drama relationships. You might procrastinate until there's a crisis because you work best under emergency pressure. You might be drawn to high-risk activities arguments, or substances, not because you're self-destructive, but because your brain is trying to feel something. Calm feels wrong. Chaos feels like home. Second, the opposite can happen. The system can just get burned out. This is called anhedonia. It's the loss of pleasure. The bright kid was motivated by curiosity. Learning was the reward. Now, that internal drive might be gone. You know, you should be happy about a promotion or a sunny day, but you just feel flat. Nothing gets through. It's not that you're ungrateful. It's that your brain's hardware for reward and pleasure has been changed by a lifetime of running on stress chemicals instead. So, here you are, an adult who feels restless, disconnected, jumpy, or numb. An adult who wonders where that bright kid went. Here's the most important part of this whole video. That kid didn't go anywhere. They are still you. These five impacts are not your fault. They are not a life sentence. They are adaptations. Your brain did exactly what it was supposed to do to help a child get through an impossible time. It protected you. It kept you alive. You aren't broken. You are a survivor. And the amazing thing about the brain is its ability to change. It's called neuroplasticity. The same brain that built these defenses can learn new pathways. It can learn safety. It can learn calm. It can learn how to connect again. Awareness is the first step. Understanding why you feel the way you do is the beginning of reclaiming that bright kid who is waiting inside you. If this video helped you understand yourself a little better, please give it a like. It helps the video reach more people who might be feeling this way. And consider subscribing for more content that helps us understand our minds. Now, I want to hear from you. Which one of these five impacts resonated with you the most? Or is there a sixth one that you've experienced? Share your story in the comments. When we talk about this, we take away the shame and we remind each other that we aren't alone. Thank you for watching. Be kind to yourself.